Okay. Super. Rietke, I'm very Hi. honored and Hi. happy <laughs> and happy that you're here uh, doing this interview with me. Um, I contacted you after uh, having seen you on uh, Wisdom from North or Wisdom of North, which I view often. And I was first of all very intrigued by the fact that you channel extraterrestrials and I love your style. You're very open. You're very down to earth. And I'm super proud that you're Dutch as well, <laughs> which is silly. I have nothing to do with that fact. But because Holland's so small, um, and there are not so many people that I know of in Holland that um, um, are really into extraterrestrial stuff, spiritual stuff. So yeah, I'm proud and honored that you um, are a part of this interview. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, would you first like to tell everyone who you are and what you do, in fact? Who is Vitika? Who is Vitika? <laughs> well, um, um, so yeah, but it's so funny because, you know, who we are, that's a, that's a whole question on itself in a sense. Because with the work that I'm doing, I've become really aware of how we build our identities. So uh, you can identify yourself by what you're doing uh, or where you are or what you feel is your truth. Um, so I would, I would choose right now to identify myself by my passion. And I really love to, to um, share with people um, how to get to a higher frequency state of being. Uh, if they want to, of course. And um, I used to do that in a sense by art. I did art school and I was an artist and I still am. I'm a painter and an illustrator. And um, throughout my life, the way it developed, I um, became a life coach, first creative coaching and then more lifestyle coaching. And then from that part on, it morphed into uh, channeling. And I really didn't know it was ever going to go there but it's where it ended up. And so now I channel extraterrestrial beings as I perceive it. I don't need anybody else to believe that. For me, the only thing that is really important is that um, it rings with my heart. Uh, it, it, I'm following my passion when I do that. Um, and apparently it resonates with a lot of other people. So because of the, the very positive reflections that I've been receiving during this work is why I'm continuing to do it. And who knows where it will go? I have no expectations there. Um, just going with the flow. Um, in my opinion, these are really exciting times to be alive in. And I'm just super curious and taking it one day at a time, seeing what will be next. <laughs> so that's, yeah, well, I'm super excited as well. And the reason why I contacted you is that I've got this particular um, quest for knowledge on sexuality and new earth. And let me um, explain a little, I've, I've explained to you already a bit of what, what I would love to know from um, the, the beings that you channel. Um, so I have a feeling um, that our personal power and creativity is being contained because we are not sexual, healthy people. And that's a generalization. I mean, there, there, there are sexually healthy people, but there are also a lot of people that use sex as a means of manipulation, uh, people that are addicted to porn, people that use it as a means of power. And the the mentors that i love to follow and i love their teachings like Sadhguru, tony robbins oprah winfrey teal swan they all say we're powerful beyond measure and we can accomplish anything we want to but if we're not healthy in the, the seed of our power and the seed of our creativity then how can we accomplish anything we want to so, so that is in fact what I would love to talk to you about. And um, also I'm hoping that um, our Yoon from the Yael, which we'll get into a bit more later. Um, it, yeah, I hope you can channel him and see what they, if they want to say anything about this and what they say about this. Yeah, exciting, fun. 
but first maybe it's a good idea to explain who are the IL. So, okay, I'll try to keep it simple, knowing that for some people this is entirely new. Um, so, okay, so instantly it's not simple. <laughs> okay, so, so if you're into metaphysics a little bit, then at least you probably understand that there is only here and now. So first of all, I'm going to have to start with this concept of time that we, that we think we're living in. Um, so knowing that there's only here and now, you will have to come to a point where you understand that all of that is, everything that is, is contained within this one here and now, even if we think it has already been. So that means the entire past is also right here, right now for us to tap into. And so is the future. So this is where the interesting thing happens. Everything is constantly unfolding and it is new, but it is also already there. So it's from that knowing that we could, can all, everybody who wants to really do that, um, connect to a future version self. And we all do have these versions of ourselves, whether it is within this life or whether it is within other lives and other societies in other civilizations uh, or on other planets, is what I mean. So um, when you start to become more cosmically aware and also about your own multidimensionality, this is eventually where you will at some point end up in this realization. And um, so as I understand it to be Aryun, which is uh, the name um, um, we agreed upon to use, because <laughs> they don't use names in their civilization, but in, in the Yael, um, but Aryun is, one future version of me so there is a male future version of me living in a extraterrestrial society uh on another planet <laughs> that has cross connections with me and i can tap into his line of thought and then we are communicating or he is sending his thought concepts through me and i translate them into language so that's how the channeling works, more or less. Mm -hmm. And the Yael, generally put, yeah, so really generally put, could be seen as a future version possibility of ourselves. Okay. And yeah. um, I think most people that will watch this, and if not, they will have to research it, um, know the concept of dimensions. We're living on, in a 3D reality. Uh, which dimension do the Yael live in? Technically speaking, we live in a fourth dimensional reality because time is a dimension on its own. Okay. So we have three dimensions of space and we have one of time okay. creating our space down reality. Mm -hmm. And then they live in a fifth dimensional reality. So it's one step up on the ladder. Okay. And that makes it the fourth density. And we are in third density. Ah, now I understand. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion about this, so yeah. that's why I'm adding that. <laughs> Kirk Nielsen talk about it. you talked about Birgit Nielsen and I checked them out. Kirk Nielsen talked about density and I thought density. I thought it was dimension, but now I understand. Yeah, so density is basically um, just uh, take the time out again in a sense, mm -hmm. and then you get into the density. Okay, and and is it because um, they are one step, if you can call it step, yeah, above us? And um, is that what makes it easier for you, for us to be in touch with them because they're so close? Um, Closer than 60 or 70 for... 60 or 70 what? Uh, six, six dimension or density or seven, I heard there are more. Uh, oh, like that, oh, yeah. like that close. No, makes no difference at all. Uh, there's people that with the same ease tap into ninth dimensional realities wow. or, or have connections with their ancestors. Uh, you know, like uh, human beings that passed over and there's all kinds of in-between realms. And the funny thing is once you get on the highway, basically everything is seep seeping through one way or another because Aryun is not alone when he speaks with me. There's usually quite a group. Mm. And um, beings from seventh and eighth are also tuning in and throwing in their little bit of thought. Uh, uh, it's just more like to pinpoint where the Yael are at this moment as we perceive it <laughs> on our linear timeline. It's what that would be fifth dimensional. That's where we are making the cross connection. Yeah, wow. Okay, I've seen your interview with um, Janneke from Wisdom of North, so I mm -hmm. already know, of course, uh, a bit of 
the background. Maybe it's too much to go into it completely. Um, I can put down a link below if people are interested in the interview, uh, but maybe just for, for the understanding of the people that will watch this. Yeah. You have been in touch with the ETs for a very long time already. Um, I started when I was three years old. Yeah. Like my first memory started when I was a really young kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so when did you consciously, actively come to channel? Consciously, um, I would say two and a half years ago, being fully aware of this being another being and having like perceiving actual thought streams and understanding that I could go into dialogue mm -hmm. in a conscious state because I already had these dialogues in dream states. And then I brought the information back when I woke up. Um, so that, that's what happened for a really long time. Um, and I did automatic writing. And, but the funny thing of that is, I got, now it's gonna sound really funny, but I get kind of stoned when I'm channeling. It feels like you smoke something. Um, but I got into that state real easy. Like I, I'm, I was a meditation addict for years and years. Since I was 24, I really felt drawn to meditation. And I realized at some point that I was having experiences during meditation that other people weren't having. And, um, I just kept putting everything aside, like, oh, well, you know, then that's an exception, but not really going into it. Um, and on the side of the Yael or Arun side, it actually took quite an effort to get my attention eventually. Um, there was another um, channel needed to, to, to really get through to me, like a human, another human being had to channel him for me to, <laughs> to underline that. They've been knocking my door for quite some while. Uh, quite some time <laughs> but um, a lot has come through in art and in writing and this is actually why I did it, the art academy um, when I was in the beginning of my 20s uh, because I didn't believe I could speak about these things so I kept them to myself the major part of my life yeah I can imagine it must have been a shock for yourself and then also you came out not so long ago well, it wasn't, it wasn't a shock. It was, it was like an incredible, I can't put words to it, an incredible, amazing way of coming home to myself. Okay, because wow. I, finally, I finally let go of my rational mind mm. and I finally embraced um, what I knew in my heart that they had always been there. And there was just this part of me that couldn't believe it. Mm. It was too good to be true. It, it felt so beautiful, but I just couldn't believe it. That's why I kept putting it aside. And then two and a half years ago, when the conversation was really kick-started because of this other channeler who helped translate to me that this option was available, um, speaking uh, Arjun's thought stream to me, and I was like, oh my God, and all these like head-on, how do you say, spot-on descriptions of, of things. They, they told me, you know, we've been visiting you since you were a child. You've basically been in school for this your entire life. You made this agreement before you were born and if you want to you're so ready to go and channel mm -hmm. and i just was i was crying and laughing at the same time and i felt such a strong explosion of energy around me and it was huge um it took me three days to get really back into my normal um yeah, grounded self i guess i was so uplifted like really um and now it, it still feels like that when I channel, I feel really high and there's such like a love stream. So it's a really beautiful thing for me to do and that, that other people um, resonate with the information that's coming through. That's just a beautiful side effect. <laughs> yeah. I watched a few, a few of your Q and A's already. I binge watched them and I just absolutely love the information that's coming through also. Because, yeah, I, I still need confirmation sometimes with mm -hmm. things that are just too amazing to be true almost. And while I'm opening up to more and more and more every day even, and I've already learned of these concepts that you talk about in your Q&A um, through other teachers that are uh, teaching about the law of attraction and that are... Um, 
more common or more accepted, if we can mm -hmm. call it that. So for me, it was super helpful and also really nice to, to hear the answers to the questions that the people were having and, and you were channeling, and which is a pretty special experience in itself for a listener. I cannot talk for you, of course. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to see if, if we can go into that and if uh, Arjun or maybe other people of the IEL are interested in, um, in answering some questions on the topic. Mm -hmm. How do we go from here? So you want to just dive into it and do that? I would love to, or perhaps you would love to first share some other things that you think are interesting for me and for the people watching to know. Um, well, what I always do tell people before I do a channeling is, um, okay, it looks a little different. <laughs> so I had to get over myself as in appearances, what it, what it looks like. Um, it's quite a blast of energy uh, flowing through my system. So that feels like I'm going to get pulled up and um, uh, I get some ticks as a result of that, but it's also a different language coming through. So there's so much energy around the throat chakra. So it sounds like it's just happening bites and clicks. And it's um, also a, a rearranging of the energy. So maybe you know of uh, healers who use their hands, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. the, the clicking sound mm -hmm. uh, actually has an effect on energy flowing. Oh, so there is like a reset happening when you hear it click. So they kind of sent that through my system and it also has to do with whatever q and a is going on and I, I never know when it's going to come which is kind of funny for me um and i don't know if you know about some meditations that they say you put your tongue against the top of your mouth yeah so that's basically what's happening when you hear because my tongue gets sucked to the top of my mouth some location of it and then when i translate another sentence of course i I will need my tongue back so you get this <laughs> yeah so <laughs> that's where the sounds come from um i work with my eyes closed because they send a lot of images most of it goes through images so i'm basically watching the movie and translating what i see wow. um so i usually get into it with a, a guided heart meditation this is how i uh yeah kind of like roll it roll roll <laughs> roll into it mm -hmm. and i'm still using that um so I do about three minute guided heart meditation. I just speak it out loud. I'm the one who starts it, or you is the one who finishes it. So about halfway he takes over and, well, not takes over, but I allow him to speak. <laughs> and you may hear a little difference in my voice, but you also may not. Um, and then when he's here, he's here, he'll let you know, and you can just start asking questions. Wow, great. So I was thinking maybe to pause the recording for now and then okay. record again. Yeah? Yeah, okay. 